Hey guys and welcome to this Windows 10 Client Hyper-V uh, experiment video effectively. So in this video we're going to see how many copies of Windows 10 we can actually run side by side or simultaneously on the system. And uh, as you can see on the desktop there, there's an ISO for Windows 10 Professional. That's 1156 is the release version. Uh, let's go ahead and use Microsoft's Hyper-V Manager to do this experiment. And we're basically going to see how many machines we can run before the system just collapses. It just grinds to a halt and bottlenecks. So let's create the first virtual machine. Now the first machine is going to be the only machine we're actually setting up from scratch. The rest will be closed. And um, it's a really effective way of basically making multiple operating systems from one one virtual machine effectively so let's go ahead and create the first one like i said so next and generation one next and we'll give it 768 meg of ram and it's not dynamic so it can't use any more or less effectively it's, it's locked into using 768 at all times and that's the bare minimum you can actually give this operating system without it being able to install effectively it can't with any less next and we're going to use like i said the external switch on the previous page and 20 gig of storage so let's go through and we'll select the ISO file on the desktop, which is Windows 10 Professional, open and next and finish. The last thing we want to do once this has been created is go into the settings of the virtual machine and under processor here, give it the eight or assign it the full eight cores of my i7 processor. Now, remember, this is a 2700K, but it's overclocked to 4.8 gigahertz. So, you know, for five years old, it's done quite well for itself. Let's connect this first virtual machine, uh, the master or the sort of template machine. Let's start it up. Now, the first thing it's going to ask us to do is select the language, as you can see there. So we're going to go for the UK. The next thing it'll ask us to do is to select uh, or enter rather a product key. Now, in my instance, we're just going to use it as a trial. So we're just going to click the skip button on that. So I don't have a product key. And the next stage it'll ask for is the product version, home or professional. We want professional. It will then ask us to accept the terms and agreements. There we go. So tick. Next. The next thing it will do is allow us to partition the hard drive or the virtual VHDX file we've created. Now it's a 20 gig. If I click new on here, it will create the system reserve partition. And it will also create the 19 and a bit gig primary partition, as you can see there. Next. And um, it's a waiting game. So let's go ahead and speed this up a little bit. And when it's back onto the customization stage, I'll come back to you and we'll start to clone it. So if you're a Windows user already, you'll know that when your PC says just a moment, I'll be back in a minute. That normally means about three hours later, but Windows 10 is actually pretty good. So we're going to go through the customization stage now where we actually select what we want to call the machine or the user account on the machine and basically go from there. So I'm going to skip this step. Uh, who's going to use this PC? Jake. And there's no password on it. There's no need because it's just a test machine. And um, basically, that's that's all you have to do. Now, the PCs default don't actually have a name as uh, out the box. You have to actually go into the system properties to give them a computer name. They're automatically generated nowadays. So, yeah, that's one thing that you used to have to do, not anymore. So as you can see now on the screen there, actually, it's getting ready. It's basically it's finalizing the user profile, starting services, things like that, getting the user experience ready. And then it will allow us to get to the desktop and start using Windows 10. And obviously, then we can export it and then re-import it multiple times. Stay tuned. Cool. So as you can see there, it says, let's start. It takes you to the desktop straight away. Usually, you'll get quite a few prompts for the first time. Uh, it will say that it's installing drivers or updates or whatever it needs to do. It does a lot for you, actually. It's quite helpful. Anyway, let's go ahead and straight off the bat, I want to kick this over. So start, power, restart. First thing I always do with any machine, as soon as it's been set up, give it a restart. Let it refresh itself. Get the services back up and running. Uh, eject your, your disks and whatever else you've used if you need to. And I find that it just tends to respond a lot better the second time round. So there we go, it's booted back up, logs back in, and that's it. that's it effectively ready to use now. Okay, so if you look at the hard drive usage on disk, uh, on the SSD itself here, the 850 Pro, 512 gig, you can see that with one virtual machine running, let it settle down for a minute, it should be under 10%. I would have thought probably about 5%, but simply because the machine's going to be doing updates, etc, 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 it's going to take a little bit more than five minutes to settle down. Um, so let's go ahead and make a few changes and I'll start cloning them the start cloning the virtual machine All right, cool guys, so I'm actually all set now. I'm ready to start cloning. So let's go ahead and open Hyper-V manager and 
in fact, what we'll do is we're just going to tidy this up a bit. We're going to minimize that down and then just to make it a bit easier. So as you can see here, the one instance of Windows 10 running, let's go ahead and export this. Now, as it is in its running state, so if we go to desktop, I've created a folder called Windows 10 Pro. It can go in here, select folder and export. Now, if I scroll across here, you should see there's a status and you can see that slowly climbing up there. So it's done a quarter already, so 25%, a third already. It doesn't take particularly long to export your virtual machine, even if it's in use, especially if you're using an SSD these days. You can obviously see over here that uh, it's using the SSD 100% to export that, uh, to read and write back to the hard drive, back to the C drive of my actual machine. Uh, we're now two thirds of the way done, 75%. And 80% nearly there already. So it's quite a quick process, guys, to export and then re import. And all we'll do as soon as that's exported, there we go, merge in progress and succeeded. Brilliant. So on the desktop now, like I said, there's the folder for Windows 10 Pro. In here, we actually have the hard disk, and there is the VHDX file actually storing Windows 10. So we can take that to any computer. Anywhere in the world, as long as Hyper-V is installed, client Hyper-V or server Hyper-V, you can import that virtual disk image in and obviously bring Windows 10 up and running within literally a minute. That's how clever this is. Okay, let me demonstrate that in the first instance then. So we've got one running. Let's minimize that down. We've got Hyper-V manager running. Let's go ahead and import virtual machine. Next, browse to the desktop, browse to that folder, select folder, next. It then finds the Windows 10 instance. Next, we're going to copy it. Next, and then in the next screen, it actually allows us to store it in a location we want to. I'm going to keep it as default, but then in the location for its actual VHDX file, it needs to be in a different location because it'll have a, the same name or the same file name. So I, I was put into one or two or three, whatever the folder is that you need it to be in. Click finish and then let it import. Now this is a waiting game. It normally takes about a minute, but you'll look at your hard drive and you can see that the SSD or hard drive is actually 100%. So it's reading from the desktop now and then writing back to the location that you've actually selected. So it's on the same hard disk. It should be quite quick. If it's two different hard disks, even better, if a, especially for SSD. Um, but this typically doesn't take more than about a minute each time. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. I'll show you the first few. And then after that, we're just going to go ahead and speed it up and do five at a time. Okay, guys, so let's look at the magic. So we've got two other virtual machines here that have actually cloned them, re-imported. So let's go ahead and start them up. So connect, start. Okay, so that's one of them. As you can see straight away, we have now two Windows 10 clients running side by side, okay? That's how simple this is, all right? And the third one, right click, start, and then connect to it. And then as you can see, we now have three running. <laughs> it's bloody awesome. It's a fantastic way of working. It's a great way of managing your machines, uh, especially in enterprise level networks. So as you can see, one, two, three. All three are running there at the bottom. So like I said, stay tuned. I'm gonna come back and uh, after I've done, I'll bring it up to 10 and we'll see how we do. And I'll come back and look at the resource usage and go from there. Stay tuned. Okay, so, so far we've got 10 copies of Windows 10 all running, as you can see there. Now, so far the system resources actually aren't all that high. If we look at the task manager for the host, using what, a third of the CPU, well, all right, two thirds of the memory and well, look, look by looks of things, about 20 to 30% of the SSD. Uh, at times, a lot less than that. So let's keep going and see how many copies of 10 we can run before, by looks of things, we're going to run out of memory. But, you know, you never know. There might be a, a bottleneck or a twist or a spanner in the works. You never know. Stay tuned. Okay, guys, I've actually reached 19 VMs. Now, they're all running Windows 10. They're actually all running here at the bottom. Um, the only way I can kind of show you them is by alt-tabbing or flash-tabbing. Flash-tabbing? That's a new one. Flash-tabbing? Uh, alt-tabbing or Windows-tabbing, and you can see they're all running there. They are actually all running on the screen. Now, when I go to start, I have a sneaky suspicion. When I go to click start on this, the memory is going to run out completely. We're on 15.3 out of 15.9, which is 16 gig. When I go start, it's going to tell me there's no memory. Yeah, there we go. An error occurred while trying to start the VMs. 
Now the reason for this is because the system has actually run out of physical memory. Now a way around this may be to close the sessions themselves. So the windows here, they're actually running with all the copies of Windows 10. If we close them down, I wonder whether we'd free up a little bit of memory. So we've got 15.3, 15.4. Let's go ahead and close the sessions down. They'll still be running. Uh, the system's still running and operating those 18 copies of Windows 10. <laughs> but the session windows themselves have actually closed down. Now, I'm going to let it sit and idle for a minute just to see what it does. To see if that memory count does drop a little bit because they're not actually running now as such on the screen. They're not taking... Uh, extra resources so I'm wondering whether it'll actually drop down in a second and actually give us the opportunity to start the 19th VM if not it'll be 18 copies of Windows 10 and that is still pretty good in my book for a comp any computer to run more than one copy of Windows is pretty good these days really and uh, you know that's pretty impressive so let's see if it will die down So I'm trying to start the, <laughs> the 19th one as much as I can, but there's just not enough memory for it to start. So we'll have to leave it there with the idea that there were still 18 copies of Windows 10 all running in, in, in one instance, effectively. They're all running together. And uh, <laughs> as you can see, there's a lot of them there. So I'm pretty happy with that. I'm just going to lay them out so they're all kind of you know cool to look at. And after that, we'll call it a day. I'm Jake Billing. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed it, please give it a like and subscribe to the videos that I produce. And as always, I'll see you next time. See you later. Windows 10. Giganet. Cool. That's amazing.